We are looking at a subject which I think we may talk about for some time called meeting God. Amen. 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 And I think that most of us need to meet with God. We need to meet with God. Amen. Amen. Now, if you take, um, I was sharing with you about a vision that I had, which I believe sets the tone. Let me read a little more before we carry on. Therefore, they did set over them in verse 11 taskmasters to afflict them with their burdens, and they built for Pharaoh treasure cities, Pithom and Ramses. But the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew, and they were grieved because of the children of Israel. And the Egyptians made the children of Israel to serve with rigor, and they made their lives bitter with hard bondage in all manner of service in the field and all their service wherein they made them serve. And the king of Egypt spake to the Hebrew midwives, of which the name of one was Shipra, and the name of the other was Pua. And he said, when you do the office of... Can you, can you turn off these lights, please? Yeah, thank you. When you do the office of a midwife, hmm, and you see them upon their stools, if it be a, a son, kill him. If it be a daughter, she shall live. But midwives feared the Lord and did not as the king of Egypt commanded them, but saved the men children alive. And the king of Egypt called for the midwives and said unto them, Why have you done this thing and have saved the men children alive? And midwives said unto Pharaoh, Because the Hebrew women are not as the Egyptian women, for they are lively and are delivered ere the midwives come in unto them. In other words, they have a precipitous labor. Is that what you call it? Precipitate labor. It comes very quickly. And then before you can say Jack Robinson, the baby is out. There are some you know, people who delivered like that. My wife almost had a baby in a car. I had to tell her, do not, do not have this child now. <laughs> because it almost came in the car. Yeah. So that's what he's talking about. They are lively, delivered before the midwives come in unto them. Therefore God dwelt, dealt well with the midwives, and the people multiplied and waxed very mighty. And it came to pass, because the midwives feared God, that he made them houses. And Pharaoh charged all his people, saying, Every son that is born you shall cast into the river, and every daughter you shall save alive. Okay. That went out of the man of the house of Levi, and he took a wife to a daughter of Levi, and the woman conceived and bare a son. When she saw him that he was a goodly child, she hid him for three months. When she could not, no longer hide him, she took for him an ark of bulrushes and dubbed it with slime and pitch and put the child therein, and she laid it in the flags by the river's brink. And his sister stood afar off to wit what would be done to him. <clears throat> and the daughter of Pharaoh came to wash herself at the river, and her maidens walked by the riverside. And when she saw the ark among the flags, you know, today we live more um, richer, comfortable, luxurious lives than kings lived some years ago. The, the, the queen. Pharaoh's daughter is, is going to bath. She has to go to the river. <laughs> so you see, when God sees us complaining about prosperity, little, little things, he just looks at us and these people, they don't know what they have. You just do this and water comes. You just click, light comes. Click, light goes off. We are more than, that's why I see myself as more than a king. I'm blessed. When I hold the mic and I speak, everybody hears. I mean, I'm, 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 I'm more than Prince Charles. I'm more than the king of England. So, when she saw the ark among the flags, she sent her maid to fetch it. And when she had opened it, she saw the child. And behold, the babe wept. And she had compassion on him and said, This is one of the Hebrews' children. Then said his sister to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and call thee a nurse of the Hebrew woman that she may nurse the child for thee? And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Go.
And the maid went out and called the child's mother. And Pharaoh's daughter said unto her, Take this child away, nurse it for me, I will give you thy wages. And the woman took the child and nursed it. And the child grew, and she brought him unto Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son. And she called his name Moses. For she said, I drew him out of the water. And it came to pass in those days that when Moses was grown, he went out to his brethren and looked on their burdens and spied an Egyptian, smiting a Hebrew, one of his brethren. And he looked this way and that way. When he saw that there was no man, he slew the Egyptian and hid him in the sand. And when he went out the second day, behold, two men of the Hebrews strove together. And he said unto them, That did the wrong. Wherefore smitest thou thy fellow? And he said, Who made thee a prince and a judge over us? Intendest thou to kill me as thou killest the Egyptian? And Moses feared and said, Surely this thing is known. Now when Pharaoh heard this thing, he sought to slay Moses. But Moses fled from the face of Pharaoh and dwelt in the land of Midian and sat down by a well. Now the priest of Midian had seven daughters, and they came and drew water and filled the troughs to fill their father's flock. And the shepherds came and drove them away, but Moses stood up and helped them and watered their flock. And when they came to rule their father, he said, How is it that you are come so soon today? And he said, They said, An Egyptian delivered us out of the hand of the shepherds, and also drew water enough for us and watered the flock. And he said unto his daughters, Where is he? Why is it that you have left the man? Call him, that he may eat bread. And Moses was content to dwell with the man. And he gave Moses Zipporah, his daughter. And she bare him a son and called his name Gershom. For he said, I have been in a strange land. Gershom means a stranger here. And it came to pass in the process of time, the king of Egypt died. And the children of Israel sighed by reason of the bondage. And they cried and their crying came unto God because of the bondage. And God heard their groaning, and God remembered his covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And God looked down upon the people of Israel, and God had respect unto them. Chapter 3. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the backside of the desert, and came to the mountain of God, even Horeb. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire, out of the midst of the bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush is not burned. And when the Lord saw that he had turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here am I. And he said, Draw not hither, put off thy shoes from off thy feet, for the place whereon thou standest is a holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am the God of thy father, Jacob, Isaac, and Abraham. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt and heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. I am come down to deliver them them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land unto a good land and large, unto a land flowing with milk and honey, and unto the place of the Canaanites, and the Hittites, and the Amorites, and the Perizzites, and the Hivites, and Jebusites. Now therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel is with me. I have also seen the oppression wherewith the Egyptians oppressed them. Come now therefore, and I will send thee to Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. And Moses said unto him, unto God, Who am I that I should go unto Pharaoh, and that I should bring forth the children of Israel? out of Egypt. And he said, Certainly I will be with thee, and this shall be a token that I have sent unto thee. When thou hast brought forth the children of Egypt out of Egypt, you shall, the children of Israel out of Egypt, you shall serve God on this mountain. And Moses said, Behold, when I am come to the children of Israel, and he shall say unto them, The God of your fathers has sent me. And they shall say to me, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am hath sent me unto you. (laughs) And God said moreover unto Moses, 
Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, The Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, hath sent me unto you. This is my name forever, and this is my memorial unto all generations. Go, gather all the elders of Israel, and say unto them, The Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob has appeared unto you, saying, I have surely visited you, and seen that which is done to you in Egypt. And I will bring you out. And it goes on. Let me, we should just read on to finish the chapter. And I have said, I will bring you out of the, in verse 17, out of the affliction of Egypt unto the land of the Canaanites, Hizzites, Perizzites, etc. Verse 18. And they shall hearken unto thy voice, and thou shalt come down and the elders of Israel unto the king of Egypt, and shall say unto him, The Lord God of the Hebrews has met with us, and now let us go. We beseech thee three days journey into the wilderness that we may sacrifice to the Lord our God. I am sure that the king of Egypt will not let you go. No, not by a mighty hand. And I will stretch out my hand and smite Egypt with all my wonders, which I will do in the midst thereof. And after that, he will let you go. And I will give these people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. And it shall come to pass when you go, you shall not go empty. But every woman shall borrow of her neighbor and of her that sojourneth in a house jewels of silver and jewels of gold raiment. And you shall put them upon your sons and upon your daughters and you shall spoil Egypt. Chapter 4, verse 1. And Moses answered and said, But behold, they will not believe me, nor hearken to my voice. For they will say, The Lord hath not appeared unto thee. And the Lord said unto him, What is that in thine hand? He said, A rod. And he said, Cast it on the ground. And he cast it on the ground, and it became a serpent. And Moses fled from before it. Wouldn't you run from a snake? And the Lord said unto Moses, Put forth thine hand, and take it by the tail. And he put forth his hand, and caught it. And it became a rod in his hand. Amen. A few little signs you can see that Moses will actually obey God, even though he's ta 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 ta, he's talking a lot and all that. You can see that he's really somebody who will obey God. And the thing that he ran away, they said, Go and take it by the tail. He went and picked it. So, you know, some people talk a lot, but deep down, they really will obey God. Do you understand? They didn't give wrong signs. That they won't obey God. That really they will obey God. What do you think? Yeah. yeah. Some people give wrong signs or mixed signals. But you've got to see which signal is the real signal. And that little signal there is the real signal. Amen. That I will obey him really when it comes down to obeying the Lord. Amen. Amen. Now, meeting God, I believe that um, many of us don't know God. Do you see? And we are quite far from God. And even though we are all in the same church, some of us are even pastors of the church, reverends and what have you, there is something about us which does not really know God and we need to know God. Amen. We need to meet with God. Now, coming from our backgrounds, you get it? We all have a journey which will lead us to know him. Do you understand? And many times we don't recognize that we are actually on a journey to meet God. Do you understand? And we need to walk that journey, walk that road until we have come to meet with our God. Now, receiving an impartation is the same as meeting with God. Do you get what I'm saying? Meeting with God is what we mean by an impartation. Because when you've met with God, you will be imparted to with something. Are you listening? And so we need to get to the place where we actually meet with the Lord. Now, I was telling you that I had a a vision. And this vision actually shows a deception which I have. Do you see? Which has been proved to me over and over and over and over and over again, many times over. But I, I still don't want to believe it. And I still don't listen. Do you understand? So maybe that's why I'm having this 
vision. And I'm, I'm, I'm sharing it with you so that it will help all of us. This is the impartation you are receiving. <laughs> okay. I was walking in this vision. I saw myself walking uh, at the University of Ghana campus. I was walking there. Actually, I, I can even picture the exact place I was walking by the um, basketball pitch somewhere there towards the Aquafo Hall side there. And somebody shouted. I was wearing bright red or orange shoes, which were a symbol of me. They were like things that when you see these shoes, you know that it's me. You get it? Suddenly, a voice shouted from some of the students, who is that? Who, who, who is walking there? Who, who, who they there? Who is walking? And immediately, one of my pastor's names came to me. And I shouted his name. I just shouted his name. I said, it is this. I don't want to mention his name. I just shouted, it is this. It is this. Then when they heard it was that person, they came. People came down because they thought it was him. So when they came, they saw that it was me. When they saw that it was me and I was not him, they were bored. And they started to even push me. Ah, but you, you are not him and you say you are him. Why do you say you are him when you are not him? And one of them started to push me. Then I turned to one of the guys and said, look, be careful. <laughs> but I was quite hot because I had said somebody's name and I found out that I was not him. I thought I was him. I thought I was the same as him. You understand? And then when the people come and see me, it will be the same as seeing him. Then another guy also came, starting to. I said, hey, be careful. Then I woke up because it was getting dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> but I realized that many of us, you see, I have the assumption, you understand? Because I have the assumption that you love God. Maybe the way I love him. But you don't love him. And the way I'm trying to serve him is not the way you are trying to serve him. Yes. Like we are quite different. Yes. Do you see? So I'm making the assumption that we are the same. But actually, we are quite different. Even though we are all pastors. When we come closer, you find out that we are not, I am not you at all. You are also not me. That my vision is not your vision. And my heart is not your heart. Not that it is a good heart, but if you claim I am your father or I am your pastor or whatever, and it's like you have a different, you are a different person with a different mind and a different heart. And I realized something, that the reason is we have not met with God. Because if you have met with God, you will find the same humbling experience that we all have will amount to the same thing. Rick Joyner said something. He said he, when he's having praise and worship, he does not believe in telling people, lift up your hands. He said, if you believe that you want to lift up your hands, why should he tell people to lift up when their hands are not really being lifted up naturally? 
Or that they should stand. When they don't want to stand, he doesn't believe in telling anybody to stand. If you like want to sit, you can sit and sleep in the church. If the thing is not coming from your heart, then what's the whole point? The first time I appointed pastors, I remember, was the first time that this thing happened. I thought, I remember, I was deluded. You see, impartation service, listen carefully. Well, I'm talking about the heart that we all have. What are we all after? Because when you have a mixed multitude, these ones are after this. This group are after this. This one is after this. This one is mind is about this. This one's heart is after some. Everybody is a, is a different heart. Only the, the thing we have in common is the name of the church. Yeah. One man and his wife, their marriage was almost spoiled. Somebody was asking him about his marriage. He said, the only thing I have in common with my wife is the same address that we have. That is the only thing I have in common is our address. <laughs> that is the last thing I have in common with her is our address. That we all have the same address. <laughs> Apart from that, I don't have anything in common with her. Zigzag. <laughs> in other words, we are so different. But you see, you have a common address. So we are all moving together, but everybody has a different mind. So I remember the first time when I appointed some pastors. That is when I said, oh, these people, these are the pastors that love him. <laughs> and I'm going to work with them. And I'm going to build the church with them. So I took them to a hotel and I gave them food <laughs> and then I sat down and I drew up a master plan. If you read the mega church, the last chapter, one of the last chapters, talk about principles of church growth. That is when I brought up some of those. I was so excited and I shared those principles with them. We're going to have these principles, and we're going to do this, 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 and we're going to do this. After I shared, and we came back, after some time, I realized that the principles multiply senior pastor, maximize Sunday usage, principle of research. In ministry, I mean, things that is like my heart to, to pastor people. You know, I've always loved to want to pastor people. I've, I've wanted to have even computerized systems that when a person walks in, we've, we know the person's photograph. I've tried to get, what do you call it? At a point, they told me it's only FBI which has that thing. <laughs> because I wanted to be able to so that these 37 people they didn't come today let's go and find them this week yeah. I love the people so much the people that I was pastoring I care for them so much so I thought they were, we were the same so I said the multiplied senior pastor that we are all the same multiplied that's why when they said who is I just thought of any of my pastors and I just mentioned I said but and when they came, it was not the same. And they started to push me. Yeah, you are not the same as you are a totally different person from. Why should you deceive us? So I shared with these pastors. But as we came back, we started to work. I realized there is a difference. They don't seem to be interested in it as much as. I mean, I've poured out my heart and the visions and the dreams for the people. Yeah. If you read the marriage counseling manual, you will see what I used to counsel. Most of those things are compiled by myself and others. With my heart! With my heart! <laughs> With my heart! 
I will cancel you for your marriage. I will not hold back anything that I need, even the smallest, minutest detail. If I know it, I can tell him. And I will talk to the pastors and say, cancel them. Because I cannot, it's which I cannot counsel them, but counsel them. And I found out that the people didn't even care. They, they, they didn't even care. They wouldn't even tell them this. They wouldn't tell them that. They wouldn't tell them this. They wouldn't tell them that. So I realized that all oh, that was in my heart was not all that was in their hearts. Yeah. So you find a constant struggle. When I was a lay pastor, I'm talking about a lay pastor, preaching and doing medical work, business, whatever. How I love the people. How I prayed for the people. But you can see how we have prayerless pastors who don't care. Joel 2.17, he says, Wherefore should the people say, where is their God? He said, let the priest weep between the porch and the altar. Let them cry before the Lord. Because wherefore should anybody be able to look at a member of your church and say, where is their God? I wanted to pastor people and pray for them and take personal responsibility for the death of anybody in my church. Because Kenneth Hagin said that when he pastored his church for 12 years, nobody died. Then he handed over. (laughs) So in my mind, I have to shepherd you and pray for you and care for you so much that you cannot die. That if you die, I take it as a personal defeat if something happens to you. As the church work became bigger, I'll give it to others. Thursday meetings. And you will see, they don't even come. So I made a mistake when I said, oh, it's this person. Because it's, it's, it's me, it's the same. If I mention this name, it's the same as mentioning my name. But it's not at all the same. Yeah. Those of you who bear the title pastor, examine yourself very carefully. Examine yourself very carefully. Those of you who call yourself shepherds, IPTP. I never did any exam before I became a pastor. Nobody becomes a pastor by doing exams. You get a title by doing exam, but not becoming a pastor. What is the difference? The difference is that we don't know God. We haven't met with him. Because anybody who has met with God is changed. Changed for a lifetime. That's why if you, if you remember the, the film we watched, those of you who came for the cryptos camp, we showed the the, 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 the day I died. People who had near death experience or death experiences where their heart stopped clinically, they froze the body, 20 minutes they were dead. And then they were brought back. And some of them had experiences that they could remember. Some of them came out of the bodies and were in the operating room and heard what they were saying. You said this, you said, and there was no way they could have heard because they were unconscious, deeply unconscious, for them to open the chest cavity and go in for the heart. And they said, look, you said this. You took my vein here. There was none here. You said, go to the right side, and so on and so forth. And they gave details. Every single one of those people who came out of that experience the common denominator was they were dramatically and permanently changed. They had met with something real that changed their lives. And I believe that receiving or meeting with God is really what we really need to have. Not joining something or belonging to something. But meeting with God. Amen. Amen. Are you listening to me? And so I believe that Moses is a good example of somebody who had to meet with God. Now, Moses was as confused as you and I. Because he grew up in 
the house of Egypt from the time that he was young. And he was given gods to worship. Are you awake? Are you awake? Hey, hello, hello? Are you there? Okay. He was given gods to worship in the house of Egypt. And he was told, these are gods. Pharaoh himself was called Egypt. He was called a god. So, Pharaoh himself was worshipped. And all these people, and he grew up in that culture. And at the same time, there was another set of gods. The Hebrews had their god, who they said was invisible. But he was the only god. And then the Egyptians had god. Then, when he, he killed somebody and he went on, uh, what do you call it, exile, he went and stayed with another Midianite who was also a priest with another group of gods. So one person, by the time you get to a certain point, there are different gods claiming to be your god. Which one is your god and which one is God? Are you listening to me? So you realize that his background was such that he now was almost confused. And he was like, he doesn't know which is God. So God came and introduced himself and met him. Hallelujah. And met him in a burning bush. And he said, what is this? And who is this? And he said, it is God. Which God? <laughs> and so when they ask you what name, I say, I, I am. I am. I am. I am that I am. It's the funniest name you can ever hear. I am. I am God. <laughs> no name. Everybody has a name. Jack, this, 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 this. They say, I am. And then he met with God himself. The real God. And when he had that encounter, he was turned into another man. And that is what I want to pray for all of you. That, you know, you should meet with God. Do you see? Now, do you think Moses knew God before? The answer is no. Otherwise, he would have known. That's why he said, which God is this? I have so many gods. Midianite gods, Egyptian gods, Hebrew gods. Which one, are you claiming? Which one do you claim to be? Which one shall I follow? Many of us have also met with many gods in our development. And unknowingly, we have started worshipping some of the gods we have met on the way. And actually, we are worshipping something else apart from the true and the only God. That on our process of life, we met with. And that is what we are worshipping without knowing that we are worshipping that thing. And honouring it. And living for it. And obeying it. And serving it. In your life, what have you seen and what have you met? Have you not met with money yeah. and all that money can offer yeah. and all that money can do? Mm. What makes you get up? You see, I realized when I was dealing with, I'm, I use my pastors because they are the closest people to me. So I can see things with them and in them more easily yeah. and use it as an example. Not that they are. They are bad passes, or they are good passes, and it's growth. What I'm saying about them, you two, you are in the same. It's the same. It's just everybody's the At the point, I realized that this pastor, what he's really looking for is money. Yes. And not God. What he really wants is money. That's, that's, that's the, I came to that I came to that realization this one is after money and this one is after God so one day I had a meeting with a pastor one of my pastors said to me look you know as I'm talking you know some people find me energetic and zealous he said why are you so 
zealous about what you are saying. <laughs> why are you not so zealous about what you are saying? Why, why, why do you have so much zeal for something else and so many other things that you sacrifice your life for? Let me ask you that question. One of my pastors said to me, you know, Bishop, your, your father has money. That's why you are doing what you are doing. But my father doesn't have money. So I have to work hard. I was a bit taken aback. I said, oh, what are you telling me? It's like my zeal is not real. It's only because my father has money. Do you see my, my time to serve is like, you, you have your security. So we all, he said, in other words, I know that your secret God is money, but you have secured it and you have put it aside. So we also need to secure our God privately and put him aside. Hide him like Rachel hid the gods under the, the saddle. And the camel. Because we all know that, Bishop, we are all really looking for money and prosperity. And we know that you have it already because your father has it already. So we all know you are secure. Allow us also to secure ourselves. Allow us. Be honest, Bishop. You went to Iraq because of oil. Not, uh, because of oil. Not that you care for the Iraqis. That's what the person was telling me. <laughs> we know why you've come to the why you come to me. Because you are okay. I don't blame you. One day I said to one of my pastors, I said, you know, what you are serving is medicine. And what I am serving is God. When I was in medical school, I was, look, when you are in school, you'll be impressed by doctors. When they talk, professor this, professor that. It's like that's the whole world. To become a lecturer, to become this, to be there. We dream that one day we will be lecturers in this school in authority that dream has never left some people it, it was implanted in their hearts they've never gotten it out of there wow. Midianite some of you like Moses when you went to the Midianite house what you saw in the Midianite house and what Jethro was said it has never left you it has been with you up to the end you can never let it go and serve the real God What you saw has never left you. Money you see. Some of you have worked in a bank. You've worked here. You've worked here. As you've gone along, none of those gods, have, some one of those gods has fastened itself to you. And it's like you have to serve it. You see, look, I'm talking about the heart. Don't argue with me. When I'm preaching, I don't argue. Do you understand? Don't argue. Don't argue. I'm talking to you. And no, I've not mentioned your name. Don't argue in your heart. When you are open in your heart and you accept things in your heart, you see that God starts to help you. Many of us are serving a God called security. Wow. We need to be secure. I am securing myself. If you read a book by Rick Joyner, he says, look, he had a vision. And the Lord said the Lord was offended with him because he wanted to build a business that would secure him and he would not need financial help in the ministry. And he said the Lord appeared to him and told him, you have offended me because you feel that I cannot look after you. And he, he lost all the money and became back to zero. He got over a mil millions and came back to zero. Many of us have offended him. That's why I feel it in my heart that we can hold hands. Come hold my hand. Come hold my hand. We can walk in the same hall. But our hearts are very different. Our hearts are very, very different. We're walking in the same hall. But our hearts are very different. Yeah. Very, 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 very different. Mm. So different that it makes all the difference in the long run. Yeah. That's why when fire, you see, what we all say at the beginning, everything looks okay. But the Bible says, when he had spent all that he had, there arose a great famine in the land. When the great famine arises in the land, that is when we we'll see the differences, whether you are secure or different, that's the senior. 
So many of us, we say, I love, I want, I will, I do, I believe. But when you have spent all that you had and there arose a great famine, that's when you now see that actually you were never secure. So we are working in the same ministry. We are doing, we are holding hands. We are doing the same things. We are all holding a Bible. We are all talking about the ministry. I want seven gentlemen to line up here with Bibles. But we are all with different hearts. Thank you. Line up all the way here, seven of you. One, two. Have you got your Bible? Open your Bible. You know, all preachers. No, I want, I want you to have your cross. If you don't have a cross, go back. Come if you have a cross. <laughs> Take his thumb from him and give it to another. <laughs> Separate yourself a little so that we can see you clearly. Put on the light now. This is the time that we need the light. All of them have Bibles. All of them have crosses. No, I need the badges. I need badges. You were laughing at somebody when he was removed. Oh. I need badges. Crosses, where are the crosses? Let's see the crosses, bring them out. Crosses, badges, coats, Bibles, ties. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. But each of these will turn out differently. Young Gicho said that he was in the Bible school and he, he had a picture with 55 people. And uh, one day he was looking through his things and he saw the picture. And he said, as at the time he was looking at the picture, only five of the people in the 55 group were alive. All the rest were dead. And he said, it's only those five out of the 55 who had become serious, I mean, some had become welders, some had become electrician, different things. But the five were the people who were serious when they were in school, they were the ones who are taking the mission, and they were the five who were alive. Everybody is different. 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 This is where the difference is. Put, put down so it's there. This is where the difference is. The heart. Keep thy heart. That's what will make all the difference in the long run. When you, when you have it, the heart that you've actually met him. And there's a change there. 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 You think it's education? No. When you meet him, eh? that's why you say, give him your heart. I give you my soul. I give you my heart. But when you meet him, something will change. 
all the people who have met. So he said, anointing. And we all fell down. Okay, just fall down on the stairs. Just right here. Yeah, all of them fall down. No change in their hearts. Even my power was so much, I didn't even touch the rest of them. They all fell down. Just my word. I can lay hands until you and the hair is finished. That's why I don't like talking to journalists. I cannot explain myself to, to them. I cannot explain. I cannot explain which car I'm driving. I cannot explain what I have. I cannot explain what I do. I cannot explain to another. Even the Christians don't believe. Even the pastors don't believe. How much more a journalist? If a pastor in this church has a different mind and different heart, how much more a journalist in the world? Stand up, gentlemen. Each one of these people has a different heart. And some of them have met with God. Some have not met with God. One day, I was thinking about one of my pastors. He's a, a good pastor. And um, there was a time when I realized the enemy wanted to take his heart. I've never told him. I never told him. But I, I knew it. So one day he, he shared something to me and I said, oh, this is that. But one day when I was thinking about him, then the Lord showed me something. He said that this boy, he knows me. He's not going to go off because he knows me. He knows me. You see, when you know God, eh, if you like, it's like when you know somebody, the person always says some things. So if everybody goes to that person, you will all be told the same thing. So if eventually you go to him, he will tell you the same thing. But because maybe you, you don't really know him. Maybe you don't really know him. You don't really, maybe you know him. And you don't know him. And you know him. And you don't know him. So only two of them. So you find out that the two of them stay on the same track. Because they know God. And that's what the Lord told me. He said, that because I could see him waving like that. I saw him. I saw him over. You know, when something is for you, and eh, your child, spiritually and all that, he's somehow for you. God, even your child, when, when you are a mother and your child is like, nah, he says, oh, he's hungry. He's like, nah, he's wee -wee. Yeah, nah, he's uh, tired. Nah, he wants to sleep. You will understand all. So somehow, I don't know how. You know, I just seem to know things. It's just like a knowing. I just know this is this, this is like that, this is like that. I just seem to know them. So I said, this is like that. But the Lord said, he knows me. And I know that, you know, because he's, he's somebody who knows God. And I know how, why and how he knows God. When you know God, eh, you see, God will never raise up Pastor Oko to slap me. Come on. Never. Maybe. But the God I know will not raise up somebody's son to slap his father. The one who said, honor your father. Read it carefully. But we have all sorts of aberrations and all sorts of things that people come up with because they don't really know him. So when you meet people who know God, you sense something similar. Similar. And so the Lord said, don't worry about him. And I've watched him over the years. And surprisingly, as he has rather grown and gone deeper in the Lord, he's rather, he's rather come closer to me and come closer. And he said, I was telling Reverend Sakis and I was saying that, look, think about it. Think about how the way people grow up in ministry and in the Lord and they grow further and further away. And I was telling him that, look, if you even take my relationship with Bishop Duncan Williams today, I have a, the best relationship with him over the years up till today. He comes in and he calls, bam. He knows I'm one of his best main people. One day I, I called myself, I heard something, and I said, if anything has happened, you will be one of the best people to know about it. And yet, because God does not lead you to fight with people that he has used to help you. If somebody is close to God and God will keep on saying the same things to you, you'll be surprised. He will say this thing because that's what God says. 
As soon as you can see from the way people are behaving that they don't know, I mean, okay, they are just moving around with various, I mean, ideas and things, and it's like we are all moving, but they don't know God themselves. They've never met with God themselves. And, and that's why they don't have any quiet time. And they can't even read the Bible and hear from God and go deeper and know from God. You can't even handle a dream. You are the type of person that, that the enemy can just give you a dream to remove you from the church. Easily. You just have a dream and you are off. Because you don't know God. When you know God, you will know the difference between a dream from God and a dream from someone. If you know me and I call you, I say, hello. And I even joke and I even say, hello. You will even know me. Even when I'm pretending, you know who is calling. You don't know him. You haven't met him. If he's not your friend, you don't know God. Your heart is there. Because when you meet him, you'll pro be profoundly changed forever and ever. If you've met with him, you will love him. That's why when I sing the song, let's think about our God. Our life, I just look at the people. So they're just sitting looking. Oh, ah, ah, ah. It's like we are tired. We want to go home. We are singing the song. Let's think about our God. Oh, let's think about our Father of love and mercy. True, the one who never gives up. He's never given up on me or you. When you think about our God, the one who is singing the song, he knows God. He knows God. You can hear from the song that he says, he knows my name. He knows that when all is said and done, the same person sang all these songs. When all is said and done and everyone is gone, Lord, all I want is, is to be near you. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. You can see it in the people, even with the pastors. You can see it even with Reverend Eastwood. He came to walk around here for a few days. You can see that this person is close to God. And he knows God. That's why for years he has been enticed to leave Bogatanga and none of those things can entice him because his mind is different. His mind is on something. People don't understand that when you meet somebody who has met with God, he's strange. He's different. He's different from everybody else. He's sort of unusual. You can't put your finger on him. You always label him with a bad thing and he turns out not to be the bad thing that you've labeled him to be. How many times... Good people are labeled as bad people. Only time will tell. If you know God yourself, I don't have a problem with you. I just have to leave you to God. The God you know will guide you on the path of life. Nobody has to counsel you. Nobody has to advise you. Nobody has to say anything. Nobody has to teach you loyalty or this or that. God himself will show you. He will tell you, look, you know something? See this person, watch him carefully. He's your father. Nobody will tell you. God himself will tell you. But because we don't know God, we are able to come up with a thousand new ideas at any time. Go off on tangent. Everybody's walking on the same road. One day, somebody had a vision of a pastor. There were five of them going along the way. And suddenly, she saw that one of them had turned right sharply into the forest. And it happened exactly. It happened some nine months later. The pastor turned right suddenly off the road. One day I was talking to one of my pastors. I said, people are not afraid of God. I said, if you know God, you'll be afraid of God. If you know God and you have met with God, you will not have confidence in yourself. You will have no confidence in yourself. But when you meet with God, you will know that you are less than paper which is being suspended in the air. Less than paper. Less than paper. You will have no confidence in your ability, in yourself. You know that you have no use to God. God is just having grace and mercy for you to be moving around. You are nothing if you have met him. If you have met with God, your life will be changed. You will be humble. You will see people and you see them when they are doing something to you and against you. You know that God must be using them or God has allowed them or there is something that God is doing. Because you know how great God is. Like that's, that's why Jesus said, my father is greater than all. When they were trying to kill him, my father is greater than all. My father said, don't be, af as when, don't be worried when you do not believe in me. If my father has not drawn you, you cannot come. Because he knew. He said, I know where I am coming from. But you don't know, you don't know him. Oh, yeah. So different we are. 
Let me find three people who know God. I don't have to talk to them about anything. You don't have to talk to them about anything. Wife doesn't have to talk to her husband about anything. Husband doesn't have to. Because it's not about what people think. It's what is real. It's what is true. What is real before him with whom you have to deal. That's what matters. You'll be afraid of the one you've seen like a fire burning in a bush. When you threw down your rod and it turned into a snake. And you have to pick it up again. When you know him. When you know him. You are different. When you know him, even when you are experiencing a sinyazu, you know that maybe it's my best experience in my life. When you know him. When you know him and he's taking you on a curve, you know that my father is greater than all. The curve will straighten. It will bow me straighten. When they take you on a curve and they put you down, they say, if he wants me to die, I'll die. I know I'll die. You don't have even to pray about it. If he wants you to live, you will live. When you know God, nobody will have to talk to you about what you'll be, how you'll behave in 10 years' time. But because we haven't met him. And we are looking for a drop of oil on our heads. Can you ever substitute a drop of oil on your head? For meeting with God. Can it ever be exchanged? These are two different experiences. Meeting with God and a drop of oil on your head. When you know God. I was disappointed. Because I knew. This person I was sitting with. Sharing my deepest treasure. Because of that, those particular principles. When I see them, I always remember. The meeting where I wrote those principles out from my heart. Thinking that we all love the people of God so much. Remember when Jesus said, you love me, feed my sheep. You love me, feed my sheep. You love me, feed my I, I really love him. I want to feed his sheep. You know, if I know something, if you can watch my ministry, see how I'm always preaching, showing you everything. Yeah. I don't yeah. keep things from you. I don't have, it's not much mystical about what I do, about anointing, about anything. There's very little mystical stuff. I can flow fully in mystical things, but it's different. I'll show you everything. I'll show you even the books I read. I'll give you the tapes I listen to. And yet, you can see that you are receiving, but you are not becoming what you ought to become. Because you don't know him. Will you know him? Will you meet with him? So when I see those principles... I, 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 it's almost like I remember a time that I was hurt. So I don't touch, I don't, it's in a mega church. Have you got, have you got a mega church there? Oh, it's finished. Yeah, mega church. You see the principles. They are the wildest principles you would ever have for church. Anybody who really loves the sheep, if you were to think about those principles very carefully and we were to do them, because you love the sheep, those principles will even come from your spirit. But you, when you talk to someone who doesn't love, rather loves money, loves this, loves any of the Midianite, Egyptian, or other gods you have met on the way of your life, and you see that you are, you are talking to a different person with a different vision. May you meet him. Oh. Amen. I said, may you meet him. Amen. May you find him who will change everything in your life. This is it. These are the principles. I don't like to see them. If I don't even like to. They are powerful. They are powerful. <laughs> I don't like to remember them. Because I remember the meeting. I received a blow in my heart. And I realized that we were all not looking for the same thing. In other words, you are talking too much, Pastor. You are talking too much. We don't have time for such things. We just want to be appointed so that we can flow and be great in the church. Pastor So, what do you think? Is it a good message? Yeah. So that's what I'm sharing with you today. I want you to meet God. Thank you, gentlemen. Now, I just want to mention something as I close. Because I finished preaching. How many have received an impartation? 
Good. The what? Sign. sign of what? Yeah, it's the number, amount of time that you can spend with God. You can't, you can't stay, let's say, a day. <laughs> let's say, from morning to evening. You are just you. With him. It's, 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 it's one of the clearest signs. But you can spend a day doing every other thing. Because you are not a godly, you are not, you are not spiritual, godly. God is not somebody you know. You get it? He's somebody you read your Bible about. Might as well read the NPP manifesto. You read just three minutes, five minutes, you go one, two, three, four, and you are going. That's not how it's done. Huh? Yeah. I can stay alone with the Lord for a week, just in the house, without seeing anybody. Yeah. I just stay alone from Monday to Friday or from Sunday to Friday. Alone, just me. I'm alone. I'm not doing anything. I'm discussing things with the Lord. Oh, you don't understand what I'm talking about? How long can you stay? By, by 2 o'clock, listen, there are things to be done. Because Olele, Moses was able to stay 40 days. You cannot stay a, a day. You have to talk to somebody. Phone must ring. Text must flow. I'm not talking about fasting. No. These days, many times when I'm with the Lord, I'm, I'm not fasting. I, I, I eat. I'm just with him discussing issues. When he's about to speak to me, can you believe it? Oh? He's about to speak to me as I sit in my chair. And I know that he's about to speak to me. As soon as I sit in my chair, I disappear. And then I return. And he has spoken to me. I know that he's about to. Are you understanding what I'm talking about? Four hours. Four hours. Look, that's not knowing God. That's chanting. If you knew somebody, would you talk to him for four hours without understanding what you are saying? Think about it carefully. <laughs> Talk to him. You see, when they come, you should think that there are two of you in the house. You are discussing. That is why, you see, <laughs> that is why being pastors is strange to us. Many of us are riding on the momentum of Lighthouse Chapel tonight. That's all you are riding on. But I just want to say this in conclusion. In my experience of sending people, especially as the church has become bigger, I realized that you cannot relate with God unless you relate with somebody he has sent. Let me not even go into that. But I just want to say something. I believe that there are things which bring us to God. There are things that bring us to God. There are things that bring us to our knees. Humble us before God. Don't fight them. Don't fight them. Even sometimes sin. Don't misunderstand what I'm saying, but listen. Even sin. Sometimes, when you sin, it is even God's grace that you've sinned. I don't understand what I'm saying. Some of us have sinned because God was having mercy on you, but you didn't know. I'm not saying that God is the author of the sin, but the sin was the grace of God for you. It 
it was only when Moses committed murder that his road to meeting God began. It was only when Moses committed murder that his road to meeting God began. I tell you, he became a murderer. There are different things that bring us to our, our knees. I don't know what has brought you to your knees, but when it's coming, eh, eh, sometimes God will. Sometimes God will use you to watch the ground eh, so that when you finish, when you wake up so now. Mr. Rags and Mrs. Rags. Mr. Zero. Mr. Minus Zero. Madam Minus Zero. Minus, minus. And some of us have not yet reached there. But the day that you see that your hand has slain an Egyptian, and you see that, look, what about, look about, my hand is now covered with blood. The higher that God will use you, often the lower he will take you. The higher, sometimes the lower. Your greatest problem is your pride. If only he will not worry you, you will be great. But before he will start you on the road to the bush, I'm talking about the road to the burning bush where you meet with him. One day I was talking to somebody, I said to her, look, if you had had your job that you wanted, if you had had the money that you wanted, if you had had this, do you think you'll be sitting here? She said, Bishop, I will never be here. Today I was at the prison preaching this morning, and I said to the women, women prison, I said to them, many of you, if it were not for that you have been caught in this prison, you wouldn't be listening to preaching this morning. And they all shouted, Amen. It's true. <laughs> and I said to the ladies, I said, let me ask you a question. How many of you, when you were free, you used to insult pastors and say bad things about them? These people are looking for money. How many? And you should have seen them raising their hands. But the prison has humbled them. There they are. Prisoners. Listening to me. I said the same thing to the to the condemned prisoners at in Sawam. If it were not that you have committed murder. The first person I met, I said, what did you come here? He smiled. He said, murder. I said, who did you murder? I said, my son. I killed my son. That's why I'm here. He was holding a Bible and preaching. Hmm. You know that sometimes eh, what brought you down is what's going to bring you up, sister. Hey, 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 hey. What brought you down is what's going to bring you up. And maybe what has brought you down is what's going to bring you up. Maybe it's the beginning of your journey to something better. Think about it. Somebody who has lived as a prince all his life. Now he doesn't mind living in the desert because he knows that he's a murderer. The other places that they will kill him. So it's cool for him. It's content. Something has to die before you'll be okay with what God will take you as. God will just take you as nobody who, who talks to children. God's work, eh? It makes you like nothing. Yeah. Go and name animals. Visit people. Pray. What is that? Is that work? I can be signing checks and printing things on the computer. Yeah. That's work. God will say, no. Just visit poor people. That's my work. Except something breaks in you. Mm. Somebody look at me and say, if you offer me 10 million, 100 million dollars, I don't like it. I like to stay where God has called me to be. Hallelujah. I love it. Hallelujah. Nobody is forcing me. But many of you don't have this heart. That's why when they say, who are you? And I say, I'm pastor this. And they come and say, no, it's not pastor this. It's the bishop. They are different, completely different people. 
Why do you lie to us? Tell us that this is this when it is not. May you meet him. When you meet him, if I have met him, and you also meet him, when we meet, we will talk for a long time. And we see that we have a lot in common. I will never be worried about you because how can I hurt you when I met him? I will not be afraid of you. You can see that people have not met with God. That is why we play the fool in the church. And that's why we talk in a certain way. That's why we do things that we do. Because we do, I mean, if you know how terrible and frightening it is to fall into the hands of God, you will be afraid to take his even thousand cities. Unfortunately, I cannot say that all of us here have the same attitude towards money. Many of us would take money from the church. And the journalists are not wrong when they are accusing us. Because many of us pastors, we would take money if we had the chance. Is that not so? Oh? Oh? One day I was signing a contract for the church and the man offered me, he said, let's change the contract, we will write this and that, and I'll pay you this outside Ghana. I said, hey, my brother, write the real one, we will pay everything. Later on, I met his daughter, and his daughter said, my father speaks so highly of you. I said, why? I've not met him, I just met him once. I realized that that small thing that I did, he was expecting me to collect the money and cheat the church. The church, what do I cheat the church for? Then I don't understand who I'm working for. I've not met him. But later on, one other pastor came up and was telling me, he said, look, when you work for this church, eh, the pastor who is delivering the sun and stone, he has his contract in it. So the cost of 30 trips of sun and stone is actually the cost of 20. Or is it what? It's the cost of is the cost of 40. So the 30 is for you and the 10 is for your site. Oh, you don't understand what I'm saying. Let's say I'm building, I have my site. So you deliver the 10 stones there and then the 30. You don't know him. You don't know who you are working for. If you knew him, it's not that somebody would tell you, be honest, don't tell a lie, don't steal, don't do this. You are taking his money. Then you don't know whose money you are taking. Even medical students' hostel, when they catch a thief, they, they, when I was there, they caught a thief and they killed him. They killed him. In my area, they recently they caught a thief. They beat him and he's dead. If a man can kill his thieves, then God, when you are taking his five CDs, his thousand CDs, his hundred dollars, and you are using it for something that he has not asked you to use it for, then I think you don't know him. Oh. Because if you know, you know, you will be afraid. You don't know him. You don't know him. You don't know him. You don't know him. May you meet him. You will be afraid of him. That's one of the things. You will be afraid of him. You will be afraid of him. And you say, Lord, all is all that I have. Some of us are so scared of him. And you see... Every day when I wake up, I, I, I don't know whether I'm going to die on that day. What's that doing? I don't know whether I'm going to live or die. Sometimes I wake up and I just look at myself and say, Am I, I mean, is, this, is it the end? I don't know. Because I'm not sure of myself. I'm not sure. Are you sure of yourself? Is, you are sure of yourself because you don't know him. If you knew him, you would start to evaporate immediately. At first, I used to think, oh, I will live because, you see, I'm a man of God. So now that I'm a man of God, God himself has to protect me and keep me. God exploded that theory long ago on the road to Tamale. When we were somersaulting, I was very surprised. In fact, I was bored with God. You see, my arrogance and my distance from God made me think that I must live because I am important to God. But after some assaulting three times, I realized that it was just for my neck to break like a crack and I would have been a, a body that was being brought back to the cathedral. Crack like that because we were some assaulting like this, the car was turning. So all that I needed is for my neck to just join the car and I was holding the steering wheel. I just held it. So we were turning over upside down. All I needed is for my head to fall 
fall on there. In fact, when we came round, blood started to come from the top. That was when that bubble burst. And I knew instantly that I could die. I, from that day, that's when I wrote my will. I wrote the will. I wrote the church constitution. I prepared for death from that, from that time. I wrote the church constitution. I made it clear if I'm dead, this person is in charge. This is my will. This that. I went and put it in the court. Everything set, ready for death. As I'm standing, I'm ready for death. My will, everything. If I die, this is for this person. This for this. This for this. This for the church. Everything. I've, done, I've shared all my things already as I'm walking here. I don't have confidence. I have confidence in God. I trust him. I love him. But I don't have confidence in myself. I don't know. I don't see myself as an important person. Huh. I, I don't, I'm not sure when I, when I have seen or whether I'm doing the right thing. Are you sure? Hmm. I know you are sure because you haven't seen. The day you see him, eh? <laughs> Ask all the people who met him. Daniel, he fell to the ground. John, he fell to the ground. This one trembled like paper. When Isaiah saw him, before what? Isaiah was preaching, what do you, what do you, Isaiah chapter 5, what do you that call black, and say black is white and white is black? What do you that say bitter is sweet and sweet is bitter? What do you that say salt is uh, bitter and, uh, uh, yeah. what do you that stay long at the wine? What do you that uh, drink it? This more. When he saw God in the year when King Uzziah died, he saw the Lord. He said, my God, who is me? From that time in Isaiah chapter 6 verse onwards, the whole message of Isaiah has turned into uh, the coming of the Lord, uh, what? The Messiah, his kingdom shall reign forever. This and that and that. And that. All these woes to people, you see, stop all those things. Because he knew that he is the number one woe. How many realize that you are the number one woe? Stand to your feet. All right, lift your hands to the Lord, that I may know him. Hey, that was Paul's prayer too. Hey, yes. hey. Yeah. that was his prayer. That I may know him. Do you know him? Do you know him? Lift your hand and ask him, I want to know you. If you know him, nobody should be worried about you. You'll be okay. You'll be okay. Nobody should be worried. You'll be all right. Even 20 years, you'll be okay. If you know him, he will talk to you. He will guide you. He will keep you. He will bless you. Father, thank you. It is well, Lord. We love you. We worship you, Jesus. If you know him, a Bible certificate, school certificate does not matter because you know him. If you know him, that's all. You know him. It's not your family or that your character is like this or like that. But you know him. May you meet with God. Lift your hands and thank him. Father, we thank you so much. Oh, yes, Lord, thank you. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus.
all is said and done and everyone is gone Lord you're real all I want when the best the world has leaves me Lord, you're all that I want, all that I want, all that I want, all There are many. Many. Seeking for me. But they are hindered. Says the spirit. They are hindered by another man. 
For when you look to the left and to the right, you shall see other men who do not love me, and you shall use them as a standard. You shall see men who don't know me, and you shall use them as a wrong standard. Rise up now and come yourself. Rise up now and come, my son. Come, my daughter. And come alone when you are coming. For you cannot come with another. Yeah, you cannot come with another on this journey. You must come alone. For I have not given you another to come on this journey with. Ah. For there are those that have said, My husband will help me. And my wife, she will help me to know him and to meet with him. But I say unto you this day, no one can help you on this journey. You must know him. You must come yourself. Your wife will take you away from knowing me. And your husband will distract you from knowing me. Coming. Come now, my son, I'm waiting. Come up. My daughter, I'm waiting. Come to me. Come out on that journey to the wilderness. Come. Come walking to me. Come along. Come along. Come along. Come along. For you cannot come with another. You must come alone. Oh, come along. Come along. Come along. Come. Come walking. Keep walking. Come, my son. Come along. Don't call another to go with you. Come yourself. I will meet with you alone and I will talk with you alone. And all men shall know that you know me, that you've met with me. For as I was with Moses, and all men know that I knew him and I met with him, so then they shall know that you have met with me and you have talked with me and you have befriended me. I will be your friend when you come. When you long for me the way I long for you. When you love me the way I love you. When you come, my dear, my son, my dear, my daughter. When you come alone. Don't come with your bishop. Don't come with your pastor. Come by yourself. Please come by yourself. Talk to me yourself. Talk to me yourself. I want to be your friend. I want to be your friend. I want to talk to you myself. I want to be your friend. I long to know my children again. I long to meet with my children. I long to show them myself and show them my glory. I long to come with my father to you. I long, I long to come. I long to come to you. I long. Because I've always wanted you. Since I lost you in the garden. And since you went out of the garden. I've been hoping. And I've been planning. And I've been burning, praying. To have my sons back. To have my children back. But many are like that son. That went to a far place. Far away from me. They turned away from me. They've gone far as far as possible. But I've been hoping that one or two of you would come back. When you come, I'll be waiting. I'll be waiting to change your life. I'll bless you for coming to me. I'll bless you for choosing me. I'll bless you for loving me. I'll bless you for holding me dearer than everything else in this world. I'll reward you. Because you love me. Because you chose me. Apart from all the gods you've seen in this world, the Midianite gods and the Egyptian gods and the Pharaohs and all the gods of this world, I will love you because you chose me. The only true God. The only sustainer of life. I bless you. Oh, you shall be blessed. You shall be blessed when you come. So lift your hands to him now. And thank him for he calleth unto you. And he saith, come up hither. For I desire to be with you. To close the gap. 
to close the gap to close the gap between your heart and my heart to close the gap between your mind and my mind to close the gap between what you do and what I do to close the gap between what I am like and what you are like come 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 oh, I see an army and they are going yeah they are in a group but they are still alone they are finding out for themselves who he is they are going to meet their maker they are God they go believing and they go trusting that he shall meet with them why do you tire so easily when you wait upon me one hour and two hours is the maximum you can call upon me be with me why do you tire don't be tired for I shall meet with you and I shall bless hallelujah hallelujah oh thank you thank you lift your hands love him love him I hear the spirit say if you knew him you would be safe if you had met him you would be safer than you are today for there is risk and there is danger the danger is because you don't know him the danger is not because of demons but the danger is because you don't know him meet with him meet with him meet with him the safety I hear the word safety much safety shall come to my children as they meet with me father I love you I thank you thank you just thank him